America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. Hello everyone, this is Sister Jenna from the America Meditating Radio and I'm excited to introduce to you Meditate the Vote. It's going to be a national campaign and what we're asking for all of you to join us with is to raise the bar of conversation. Try to see in what way we can change our interpretation about who we are, what we are, and perhaps the direction in which we want this country to go in. Regardless of whoever becomes the next president in 2017, we are still responsible for the way that we want to move our lives. So could you join me and an alliance of friends around the country to meditate the vote? Go to americameditating.org, press on Events, Meditate the Vote, and you'll be able to get a whole bunch of information. So join us, because I, Sister Jenna, meditate the vote. The Azar Foundation for Children of the World is an organization aimed to support women and children in need across the globe. We believe in empowering lives, strengthening minds, and providing programs that enrich health and education. The Azar Foundation was founded in 2003 and has been serving the world ever since. Visit us at our website at www.azarforchildren.org. That's www.azar, the number four, children.org to find out more information about our endeavors and join our mailing list. Remember, the smile and the cry of a child doesn't have any language. The Azar Foundation. Sister Jenna and the American Meditating Radio Show are the key to peace, truth, beauty, and all that is good in the world, which is why I am a confirmed listener. This is Valerie Alexander, author of Happiness as a Second Language. Are you stressed, frustrated, or annoyed at work? You don't have to be. Soothe your mind and open your heart as Sister Jenna guides you through a peaceful, calming meditation that will prepare you to focus, be present, and most importantly, bring you back to your inner peace. Don't let your fears hide themselves deep within your subconscious where they become very raw, Expressing the fear of loss or rejection can help you to understand ways in how you interpret oneself. You see, when we bury the fear deep within, it can emerge in unhealthy ways and even inflame greater wounds of fear that's sitting inside.
Space by Bliss. Hello, everyone, and welcome to America Meditating Radio. I'm your host, Sister Jenna, and we are broadcasting from the beautiful Meditation Museum in the nation's capital. I can't believe we have two, and maybe three, and maybe ten, and maybe twenty one day, maybe a hundred. Who knows? But what I do know is that it is definitely a place that you can come into to remove your fears. I've been having this um, season of uh, exploring this energy of fear. I guess it got triggered even more after the Istanbul bombings and then the failed attempts in Saudi Arabia and um, the Brexit in the UK and stuff. You know, just stuff. And fear is like, as I mentioned in one of my other conversations, the root of that is algae, anger, lust, greed, attachment, ego. All those energies that are just feeding in the soul in their own ways. And they're sometimes very subtle, but sometimes very obvious when we see them come into action. And so what is it that we are supposed to do with us? What am I supposed to do with me? How do we examine if we are inflaming fears that are sitting inside or if we're deactivating them. And so I always um, invite my friends to um, write down the thoughts that you don't want anyone else to see, the thoughts that you'd be ashamed of if anyone knew you were thinking those thoughts. That's one. The second thing that I'd like you to start to do is to observe as you're moving along, whether it's on the highway or you're in the house by yourself and your child or your husband or your wife comes up and just says, hey, and surprises you, and you jump out of your skin. Like, why? You knew you were in the house safe and sound, but where were you at your base? Why was that there? Why do we get? Why does the heart beat faster when we're driving on the highway and it looks like someone's going to cut us off? without us knowing that it's going to happen, and it just it, it just shocks you. You get scared looking at a cockroach? <laughs> you know, I still can't stand looking at a mouse. So uh, where are those feelings? If I am a soul, and your soul, and soul is energy, and soul is immortal, then what gives? Why would an immortal being live a mortal existence? Is it because of the attachment to the body? Is it the attachment to the stories? Is it the attachment to unfulfilled expectations? Is it this? What? Come on, brothers and sisters, I need to hear you because it's it's getting better. And at the same time, it's also getting worse. And so um, what kind of a work are you doing in examining your attitude towards your day-to-day unfolding and you know because when you examine attitudes that subtly make others the root of your personal or collective problems that's interesting i mean think about it witness your own way that you come to your conclusion look at how you look at your beliefs that uh, you know and where maybe you might find that they're not in your integrity with who you really are at the core of fearless child of God. You see, wounds of the past, they often seek cover and hide out in respectable places where they can slowly release their hurt, you know, and disaffection in ways that can just fool you. It can fool us, it could fool everyone. Because you might be able to conceal your fears or your wounds or your pain or your inadequacy or your worthlessness. It doesn't mean you're okay or you're healed. It doesn't. Reminding yourself that um, it's really the linear truth of who said what or did what to whom that is most important. That if we were to think that everything is actually cyclical, that we're in a cycle. And in a cycle, things are going to change, but things are going to return. So what I do today is going to impact me in the future. If I kill someone, that's going to impact me in the future. If I love someone, that's going to impact me in the future. 
If I hate someone, it's going to impact me in the future. If I go to blow up a mosque, that's going to impact me in the future. If I go and detonate my own life, that's going to impact me in the future. If I hurt a child, if I sell a child for trafficking because I need money, it's going to infect you in the future. You're going to go through what you've done to that child or to that person. And so if we look at our lives in a a cyclical format, then we might really somehow, maybe automatically, some deeper powers, some deeper internal strengths, it could come to the surface and give us triggers to be stronger. Are you thinking? Because what needs to be released is the pain. Whether you seek restorative justice and don't rush yourself or others into quick healing. You know, a cultural anthropologist and educator, Angelis Arian, once told us, healing will never occur in a fast lane. Never. So if you're thinking that fear is linear, so I did it and I got away with it and I'm done and I'm moving on, something is sitting in us. So you're not the healer, and, and that's something that I've had to deal with for myself for quite a long time, is that I'm not the healer for the world, but I am a part of the healing in the world. And that was a big aha moment for me. And so when I thought about that on the cyclic sense that I am using my life and my life is a part of the healing, it just opened me up to really feeling that there was something bigger going on, something more important for me to accept and to appreciate. I hope you're hearing me here, my friends, and this whole concept of fear has really struck a very deep chord in me, maybe because I don't want any in me, but also because I I can't bear turning on the news anymore and hearing someone's gone again because somebody else couldn't contain their fear. Why don't we do a little bit of meditation? I want to turn to using soul consciousness, because if we're soul conscious, we will be embodiments of love. And when we are embodiments of love, then there is an absence of fear. This is from Sister Genti's uh, Knowing Myself Meditation CD. And I'd like to invite all of you to take a deep breath. Breathe in. Let's take some time to be ourselves. Experimenting with these exercises, one is able to discover the sweetness and the beauty that lies in knowing the self. The more I know myself, the more I'm able to maintain the awareness of my true identity and move away from all the different compartments and limitations that I have imposed on myself. The image that we generally have of ourselves is a fairly negative one. But that's simply because we don't know who we are. And so we allow external influences to restrict our thinking and put us into boxes and create bondages and feel the pain of those bondages. Meditation is the method of liberation, of becoming free from the false impositions that I have created for myself and I have accepted in terms of what the world has imposed. It is important to experiment with these ideas, sitting quietly, in solitude, in silence within. However, it is equally important to experiment with these concepts during our day-to-day activity. Having had a glimpse of the identity of the self, then, when it's time to leave my little corner of meditation and move into the world outside, I must learn to maintain this awareness of being 
a point of light using the physical instrument to look out into the world using the lips to express my thoughts and ideas to communicate with others being the master listening to the information that I receive but being the master deciding discerning what it is which has value what it is that will enhance my own awareness retaining that information communicating that information but also being able to filter out that which will pollute my mind that which will cause my feelings to become corrupt so that I maintain the integrity of this experience of eternal consciousness. Both things are aligned together. My time in silence, experiencing the eternity of the self, but using this awareness in my day-to-day -day activity. If through the day I maintain this awareness, then whenever there is a moment at which actions can finish, I can turn inwards and come to the state of Om Shanti and the awareness of Om Shanti, the awareness of peace, is also then expressed through the work that I do during the day. Om Shanti. Beautiful. So if we try to apply what we just received from that meditation, do you think your fear will reduce? I think so. And so the fact that when we look at our lives in a, a cyclical vision, then it gives us a, a deeper sense of accountability as to how we are to live our lives and how we should think about the feelings in the life of another. And, and I think about it a lot because born in an environment where there aren't job opportunities, you're forced to believe in a religion, you are under traditional restraints, but something in your spirit wants to feel a kind of freedom or a kind of strength or power or love. And, and then you get so tired, you get so beaten up by it all that the frustration just keeps boiling. And you feel that you go into these waves of being faithful to your truth and then you come out of your faith of your truth and then you get this image on the TV or you pass by a store and you see a guy in a Mercedes with a nice suit and he's handsome or a woman who's got the greatest figure and she looks gorgeous. And then you think, but why am I not having that? Why is that not my fate? Right? And then you start to concoct a whole bunch of things in your head and you move away from your spirit. You move away from your soul. And every time we move away from our soul consciousness, fear increases. Yes, your faith comes from waves of healing, love, acceptance, and forgiveness. It comes. And each generation in our history is given wounds to heal from the past. I mean, look at the great healing work that was done to move the world forward after the suffering of World War II. It's remarkable. How many wounds to the soul, the psyche, the mind, the body, the wounds of betrayal, the injustice, the separation and loss look for in the 21st century and um, our work right now to all of my friends and fans on the American Meditating Radio. Our work is to open up ourselves to be healed first. To my brothers and sisters who are in gangs, who have signed up to something quick, something that feels like it supports what they think is the way to live, heal, 
thyself. And so finding healing is always the beginning of a story and not the end of one because it, it spreads. And it will go on spreading, you know, until all our painful evolutionary stumbling leads to our achievement of um, being divine with one another. You are born to do this now. And you don't have to be Pisces like I am. <laughs> I mean, we are born to really shift the story. So it's cyclical. We are energy. And as energy, we're, we, we have the capacity to keep recycling ourselves. And so we have to intervene in our own self-destructive cycles. It's not the job of a government, a leader, a kingdom, a policy as such. Those come into play because we can't govern ourselves. I can't govern myself. So you tell me what I should do. And if what you tell me doesn't really suit what I want, then your problem. This government is rigged. You guys are corrupt. But you're corrupt too. How many times have you gone against love and peace and purity and trust and truth and divinity and dignity and integrity and ethics and calm and purity? Every time you go against yourself, you're rigged. You are rigged. You've rigged your own system and you've corrupted your own system. So we have a chance to resolve our unresolved wounds and... Um, Move into a place of um, love and beauty. Remember, hiding vulnerability is itself a wound. In fact, it can be even a greater wound that can lead to violence and a feeling that I need to dominate another person because I'm rigged. My inner system is messed up. Are you hearing me? Fear is a linear approach. It's not cyclical. We can break our cycles. We can break our cycles if we want to. You get it? <laughs> yep, you are listening to America Meditating Radio. We are talking about fear today. And we want to understand the depths of what resides in our heart. So, to all my brothers and sisters across the globe and locally, here's wishing you an extremely fearless existence, a fearless life and a fearless truth. And as we breathe in and out our own breath, let it be known that our breath of life is another chance to be grateful and to find gratitude and joy in the things that we decide to do. Remember, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission. And we are here to love each other the same. My invitation for you to meditate the vote is joyful. Please feel free. I really, really feel like we can move beyond this rhetoric of limits and negativity. Here's Lifted by Lucinda Drayton. Take care, everyone.